it's never this is the whole point of being a human writer is you can tell it in your way how you do it i think that is where the value of what we do comes that out there it freaks me the fuck out um so yeah primarily for me i've used it a lot for activate your energy Welcome to the Activated Authors Podcast, a show where we distill the core principles of what it takes to become a happy, healthy, and productive author, no matter what stage of the journey you're at. I'm your host, Daniel Wilcox. I'm an international best-selling author, as well as an author coach, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. But most importantly, I'm a lifelong student of all things productivity, psychology, and human behavior. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Without further ado, let's dive in. What is up, Activators? And welcome back to another episode of the Activated Authors Podcast with myself, Daniel Wilcox, and as always, the ever omnipresent. <laughs> omnipresent? I was going to say effervescent, and then I was like, no, that's a weird thing to call a person. So I went for omnipresent. No, effervescent is lovely. Omnipresent makes me sound like. Ever effervescent Sam. The omnipresent effervescent Sam. Hello, that's me, Samantha Frost. I am neither effervescent nor omnipresent. You do not need to guard your genitals. I cannot see you. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start. How's it going, Sam? How's your week been? My week has, oh God, um, I should know this. I lived it. I do think before, sorry, before you jump in, because I ask a question and then fuck it, like, let's just go in a different direction, but we're not actually yeah, that's this is, so, this is just the backbone of our relationship. Go on. I do think that because we record these on a Thursday morning, there's an inherent, what the hell did I do? Because I think if we recorded these on like a Sunday evening or a Monday morning, mm. the way that weeks are constructed, I think it would be easier then to know what we did. But I think I do think there's something of like, oh, what the fuck have I done this week? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Also, my brain is pretty crappy with <laughs> just remembering short-term things. Um. So... I'm I'm going to, I'm just, this week for me is going to be from last Thursday to this Thursday, because that's a week's period of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been okay. Um, I got to chill with you. Mm -hmm. I got to hang with the little dude, and that always makes me happy. Um, I've been in a considerable amount of pain, which has not been great. Um, that was present last week's podcast, obviously, because we were... Yes, both, all, all, of, all of it. Um, I've reached that age. I mean, I reached it a while ago. Like, who are we kidding? Where like you get serious kind of debilitating problems with backs, knees, ankles, hips, heads, armpits. I don't know. And toes. Uh, and yeah. toes. Yeah, by like simply you know going to sleep or saying hi to someone. You know, it used to be or if thinking they, you know, about getting breakfast. Yeah. It used to be like if I had an injury, um, there would be a reason for it. You know, I don't know, like I fell down the stairs or a car ran over my foot. That happened once. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, weirdly, I didn't break any bones or have any bruising. I don't quite understand how that works, but there we go. But But these days it is like people are like, what did you do? And I'm like, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, apart from um, pain um, and the general like malaise and stuff that comes with being on pain meds and feeling kind of a little bit claustrophobic because I can't move and do stuff as usual, it's been okay. I've been, I'm I'm all right. I'm like I'm kind of baseline. I think I'm not like nice. ecstatic, but I'm not. You know, the other way. I think baseline's a good place to be. So that's that's where I'm at. How about you? How have you been? Um, that's me loading the question. There you go. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, like the so we recorded last week's episode on Sunday. Sunday. So it was only about four days ago. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been cracking on with stuff, just trying to get some bits and pieces done. Which I'll talk about one of those. Um, in a minute but for those chronicling my experience of trying to work out what the hell is wrong with my hands i went for mm. a nerve conduction test on saturday which was an experience because it was literally um putting sort of pads at certain points across your hand across your finger and stuff mm -hmm. and then them just deliberately running electricity through your nerves to trigger a response from different different fingers just a test which 
um, just to see if there's any latency in the connection between the nerves and whether there's mm-hmm. a generative there. Um, and it was one of those where it's gotten to the point where they've ruled out arthritis. Um, there's no signs that I can see at the minute that it's repetitive stress injury. And so it was suspected that it could be carpal tunnel, um, which is a lot of people know carpal tunnel runs kind of mm-hmm. like across the carpal part of your wrist and affects your thumb all the way through to half, like about half the motor function of your ring finger. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, an alternate one called cubital tunnel, which uh, runs basically the, the ulnar nerve goes from sort of where below your, um, I was going to say knee then, your elbow is. And your ulnar nerve is typically what you hit when you hit your funny bone. It's that horrible feeling that you get. And that runs right up your forearm and into your little finger and into half the rest of the half of the, the ring finger. Yeah, and yeah. it was it was looking likely that I potentially had both at once. And yeah, joys. And so they ran their tests for about 10, 15 minutes of just my digits doing random spasming of, of their own accord. Um, so fun. Yeah, only to tell me that good news, it's not any of that. And so I sat there and was like, okay, I mean, I guess. What that, is it? Yeah, I was, I was asked good news in some way, but like, I don't know what it is because it, it is now, for me, it's kind of getting to quite a serious point where um i kind of have to reserve my hands for work um like i tried to sit down and just play a playstation game last night for 10 minutes and it just it hurt and it was not nice um like holding my phone holding books like playing guitar anything that is hand or finger based is becoming a real issue and so i'm kind of getting a lot more hot on the phone with my doctor just to be like what is going on or at least just to get some like because i don't i don't have any like pain treatments or anything sorted other than ibuprofen which i know i can't take for extended periods of time so i don't know what's going on um and that's kind of bumming me out a bit so that's been a big chunk of my week but on the flip side of that uh, kind of what i alluded to a little bit before and what has started to be announced on different channels and if you're listening to this it'll be monday the of february which means that it'll be five days away before i am doing 20th sure yes let's just say yes um but if you're listening to this on the week of launch then feel free to join me because i'm doing a free webinar where i'm sitting down with authors for an hour or so and basically talking about zip well going from zero to author so covering the author journey what it means in the 21st century to make it as an author and kind of some of the specifics that you'll need to know in order to boss it as an author um i'm doing some of that with the activated authors tomorrow as mm-hmm. a recording um, which will be very exciting but yeah, by all means, if you want to find out more about that, that's at activate, or you can sign up at activatedauthors.com forward slash zero, uh, which is Z-E-R-O, not the number. Um, and all the information is also on our Facebook group, which let's just let's just take a minute to just note the fact that our Facebook group has doubled. Yes. And our Instagram following has tenfolded almost mm-hmm. in the last month. So thank you and hi to all you newcomers and all you people that we've not met before. We are the Activated Authors. I'm Dan. I'm Sam. Sam. <laughs> Still can't see your genitals. No, Jesus. That sounded he, like I needed to like um, turn it off and like on again. I still can't weird. see him, Dan. I'm trying. It's not working. I'm really trying. <laughs> but yes, welcome to all new people who are stumbling across this podcast, finding us, doing all the good things that you know you do with your writing. And obviously, if we can help you in any way, give us a shout, man. We're all over activatedauthors.com. Um, yeah. Yeah, over on to, I guess, our key takeaways for this week, Sam. I wrote mine down. Um, I do this when, like, I actually give myself time to think about uh, what it is. We were just, just before we started on air, Dan was asking me if I had one. And I said that, like, it's difficult for me because I'm kind of not the best at reflecting. Um, But that is something that I am attempting to rectify. So I gave myself... A hot little 30 seconds to have a think. And I realised that there was something, actually. And that is, I've written, I can trust that I have done the work in creating a solid foundation for the life I want to live and allow those who I have chosen to surround me to help me because I trust my judgment and, by extension, I must trust those in my inner circle. Damn. That's better than mine. I just found a new Starburst flavour I like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's beautiful thank you that's powerful well you know there's been like yourself included uh, a few people that have really kind of like gone above and beyond to help 
not just in my time of need with my back, but in other moments. And I still very much find that my knee jerk response is to be like, no, I don't need it. I don't need help. Or like, no, I'm a burden or like, no, you know, those kind of things are still very much like on the surface as a reaction. Mm -hmm. Um, And I often find that like someone will offer help and the bigger the help, the more I feel guilt about accepting it so for example I was supposed to be getting the train home this week and Dan was like you are not getting on a train you can barely move um and I was like I'll be fine <laughs> and Dan's like you can't move across the room it's not happening I'm gonna I drive you home the train with a debil- de- debilitating back injury and that was for like 15 minutes it was tr- it was awful yeah um and like you know me and Dan do not live close to each other it was like a three and a half hour car ride um and so accepting that was very difficult for me <laughs> because I felt extremely guilty and like I was doing something wrong but the fact is Dan wanted to help and he offered it and Dan is the type of person that will not offer something if he does not mean it mm-hmm. And so it it was like, I think that was the big thing that made me realize like, okay, if I, if I've chosen to allow these people into my life, then I have to let them in. And that, you know, it's, it is, it's the trust thing. It's, it's a big thing for me. It's not easy for me to trust people. Um, But yeah, so there we go. That's my takeaway. What about yours? What is this new Starburst flavor and where can I get it? Uh, I was like, (laughs) Really sorry. Ah, you can't just like wave new sweet flavors in front of my eyes and then take them away, you <laughs> dickhead. Um, <laughs> we uh, just side note: we need to do some uh, potential blooper outtakes for some of the people requesting it on the Facebook group. Yes, I saw that. I, I, I that's don't know. If... <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's <laughs> wise. <laughs> You think this is bad on air? Wait until you see it when the cameras oh are on. Oh my god! But mm. I mean, if if that is something that has, I we can I can certainly look into editing it. I still edit them, so I can I can uh, make sure yeah. that I'm not terrifying anybody too much. Yeah. Um. Just before I go to my takeaway, just while it's at the top of my head, because I know that I didn't write this down, which means I won't remember it. For people who <laughs> would like to uh, hear me talking about um why you shouldn't stake your success as an author on your first book. Yes. I was invited as a guest onto the Indie Author podcast to speak to the wonderful Matty Dalrymple. Um, and we had like an incredibly fun conversation. Uh, mm-hmm. This was a couple of weeks ago. The episode came out, I believe, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we just had a lot of fun talking about books and process and all that kind of stuff. So if people want to get a little bit of extra on that kind of stuff and, and hear a bit more behind the scenes and go over to uh, the Indie Author podcast and check that out because Matty is awesome and she's doing some really, really cool things over there. Yeah, it's um, a really good interview and we will put the link in the show notes. And by we, I mean Dan. Oh. Ah. <laughs> 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 <sighs> right, okay. Uh, <laughs> please hold, dear please listener, hold. viewer, while Daniel puts the link in now because if he doesn't it won't happen this is true this is painfully <laughs> true that's good one as well uh, uh, da, da. Yes. <laughs> say it out loud while you're doing it um so my key takeaway <laughs> for this week um i don't know i don't know it's a big takeaway in in essence i guess in terms of concept but i've been reading uh yuval noah harari's book sapiens which i think i mm. might have touched on uh, in previous weeks um but i am working my way through that and my god i'm loving like every moment of it because um i don't i i was never interested in history didn't give a shit like just did not care growing that's up so surprises me about you yeah like i just it, i didn't see any utility or use for it and i mean obviously like back then they were pretty much just ramming world war ii down your throat at every yeah and pretending that we had nothing to do with the slave trade. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the only things I literally can remember from, I don't know, like 10, 12 years, however long you're in school of history, is World War II, is not being allowed to watch Schindler's List because my mum didn't sign the thing to being put at the back of the class in which I could watch Schindler's List in the reflection of an A6, an A1 poster, um, to learning a bit about the Romans. <laughs> like, I'm sure we did more than that. That's what I remember. But yeah. as... I've kind of progressed and, you know, gone through different careers and things. And I think really fallen down the self-development tunnel as part of 
learning how to develop yourself and how the human body works and the human mind works, you begin to pick up bits and pieces about our evolution and about where we came from, the different factors that have kind of shaped mm-hmm. the world we live in. Um, the last few years for, for many reasons, like politics has taken, has whetted my appetite in, in certain ways, mostly out of curiosity and frustration. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so this book is, is kind of, um, the missing piece of that puzzle for me, cause it's, it's literally the it's timeline. The missing link. It's a missing link. It's the timeline, a, eh? the Thank timeline you. of human evolution. So it kind of begins at Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, all the different, um, sects of human that were out there because we weren't the only ones um kind of goes through their evolution into their expansion to the world covers sort of you know extinction events tools uh, revolutions like cognitive and uh, uh, agricultural and all the different things and just every chapter i'm listening to is just fascinating because once Mm. you see a full lineage of what's going on you realize how much we have advanced in the last 100 years when it comes yeah. to technology, which, you know, plugs today's episode a little bit. Um, really? But yeah, also in the sense of like medicine and growth and food. And like, at the same time, I've mentioned that I'm reading uh, Stolen Focus um, by, I'm sure, that's, I'm sure that's a Hari, Johan Hari, I think, potentially. Um, it's definitely Johan. I just love the fact that you cannot focus on the name of that book. It kill it just I makes know. me so happy. Yeah, ironic. Um, <laughs> But there's so many crossovers between what they've identified as things that are stealing our focus versus the very unnatural evolution that we have undergone in the last 100, 200 years. Um, and this isn't like a TED talk in which I'm going to go into all of the things. But just suffice to say, I am devouring every part of this book. Like it is, mm-hmm. it is all of the things. And it really does bring things into perspective. And the hilarious part of this was I was kind of reading a lot about... Um, the tribalism and sort of growth of uh, and sort of like the arguments for patriarchal societies and how different tribes develop and, and kind of a lot, a lot of talk of very sort of um, primitive cultures. Mm-hmm. And then I went to a Frank Turner gig and just watched 50 people run around and smash each other in the middle of, the middle of a mosh pit. And I was like, yep, mm-hmm. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not dissing it. Like I've, I've done the whole mosh pit thing. Like there is something really cathartic oh, yeah. about just like unleashing adrenaline, but it was just hilarious to go from like reading that to just going like, and here it is. <laughs> um, just, just in case you weren't aware, because sometimes like as we're trying to, I do it all the time, as we're trying to um, navigate ourselves to the thing we're trying to say, we like half start something that's in our brain and then abandon it on on the side of the road to the the point. Um, you I, just for just for um, listeners, you said um, arguments for a patriarchal society and then and then carried on trucking. So I thought you might want to address that so that people don't think that you're like yes, hail the patriarchy. Uh, for, for <laughs> just just the. the the um there's a mystery surrounding as to why patriarchy has thrived in the face of um counter arguments and other species of animals and how they've adapted so yeah there we go i'm neither for nor against how, what <laughs> so our wins <laughs> <laughs> no so our wins from the community this week um i'm going to forego the typical sort of wins from the sack and just say a massive thank you to emmy and eden mm-hmm. uh, not only is eden now running the evening sprint the evening sprints the evening sprints yes course, yes uh seven till nine o'clock on tuesdays and thursdays where writers are jumping in and getting their work done mm-hmm. um but emmy has uh, stepped forward and is now offering additional sprints throughout the week so we've now got extra yeah. sprints running um within the activated office community on wednesdays and fridays 11 till half 12 so yeah we, uh, I think it's six sessions. We currently have like one and a half to mm-hmm. two hours throughout the week, um, which is very, very exciting. So just yeah. a huge note to say that thank you both. You are massively appreciated. Yes. And um, like, come along. Like you can, you can, you can try it for free for 30 days. Mm. And not only do you get to like hang out with me and Dan, you're welcome, but you get to see Emmy and Eden Eden has a brand new hat, which is handmade and they are obsessed with. And Emmy, depending on the time of the year, will have a headband on to reflect either 
the specific moods so at the minute she's uh sporting heart dealy boppers mm-hmm. um or just her general personality like the floral t-rex one yeah like what's not to love you come along see that get your words done bish bash bosh you're welcome bam bam yeah there's something so <laughs> nice about writing with other writers yes like i don't know i don't know just a nice environment to be in mm-hmm. uh but yeah activatedauthors.com forward slash sprints and now into today's question yeah flawlessly how <laughs> can authors use ai subtitle there we go Should they? stop it <laughs> the <Thanks> end. <laughs> <laughs> no so this is this is something that has been circling around um in our talks a little bit behind the scenes it's been popping up every i'd be surprised if anyone listening to this hasn't heard about like some of the huge jumps that have happened in ai over the last um couple of months really mm. um you know people that listen to joanna penn for example joanna penn is very very hot on this stuff and she has all the episodes and all the resources on ai stuff but like i i, I thought it would probably be worth us having a conversation about that because both me and you um come from very different not viewpoints on this but very different i kind of um i've dived quite deeply into this at the minute i think you've not yet taken that journey no i'm i'm i have a uh a book in mind that i've had in mind for a long time um and i know that if i dive down this rabbit hole now i won't be able to stop thinking about it and i figure if that's going to be the case i might as well use it to fuel Mm. uh the dystopian novel that i have in mind there you go 1985 (laughs) Um, so <laughs> little disclaimer before we begin, uh, neither, of, neither of us are experts in this. No. And, um, this is by all means, just so far the breadth of what I've managed to uncover and use in this and kind of some of the opinions that are forming, because so much of this is very, very early, um, in production and what we've already seen. And I know this is going to happen just because of trends of typical, um, booms in different services and, and things over the years is that. Now that this has kicked off, it's mm-hmm. going to accelerate very quickly because all it takes is that first person to release before every other company suddenly goes, shit, yeah. now we need to put that funding into it. Yeah. And things boom. And um, we've already kind of seen that. And that's like, I'll, I'll go into that a little bit later. But like, this isn't by any means definitive. There's there's a lot more out there that I'm mm-hmm. sure that other people have heard of, have experienced, things that we're not covering. Um, but it, I thought, I, I will be honest, I've had some positive experiences using AI that we'll definitely go into. Um, Mm -hmm. I definitely also have some quite considerable concerns. Um, So I guess to begin, it's kind of covering, you know, I don't want to ask a question, what is AI? Um, But essentially, I think we kind of have to a little bit to start with. So some of these services they are not AI in the sense of the sentient robots that have come out. We're not looking at like Asimov's (laughs) iRobot um and <laughs> coming to life although robots are also advancing very very quickly look up parkour robots um particularly the guys at boston labs and, and the red button them. problem if you want to never be able to sleep again and constantly be soiling your pants exactly um but these so the the services that have kind of really boomed lately are ones that primarily affect um text audio and video um and imagery are the mm-hmm. ones I've kind of like seen a lot of play with and there are some good things. So let's let's start with an example of one that's probably been booming around for, for a while now, which is Chat GPT. Um, I've discovered today that GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Don't know why that's relevant, but they, right. I, I just got curious. Um, but Chat GPT is essentially a, it's just a chatbot. It's just an area where you type text, you can ask questions and generate responses that are automated based off of the system's learning from whatever input that it's had. And it's had quite substantial inputs at this point, I, I believe. Uh, but for example, I could say, and I have done this, um, give me the top 20 hashtags to reach horror authors on Instagram. And ChatGBT will go, okay, very, very similar to how instant messages work, like MSN, WhatsApp and stuff. It'll pop up and go, okay, here are 20 hashtags for you. And it will give you hashtags. Um, not always 100% perfect, but pretty damn good from what I've seen so far. Not only that, but the, this is kind of like where the AI side starts to come into it. You could literally say to it, type nothing more than give me, remove five of those. And it will remove five of those, give you the 15. And then you could say, um, now take the top three and give me something. And the idea is that the more questions you ask it, you can literally just chat 
in a very informal way like like me and you are it's not like when you go to google and you have to be very specific with a search and you can't just mm -hmm. go like oh give me more oh give me more um and it, it it feeds those responses it learns from the things that you say it answers in that way that you know it is just a casual chat and then you can you can glean information from it so I have played around with it and for example um with a couple of friends said like give me a character name give me a weapon and give me like a location and i've said to chat, chat gpt can you write me the blurb for a horror movie featuring these and it will write me a blurb for a horror movie and then i can say now expand that into a chapter outline like a 20 chapter outline and it will then break down into 20 different chapters write down essentially the outline of how a book would work for you say include this character take this character away and it will remember what you said and it will kind of respond as such and that's kind of the text chat gpt side of things so for people who are a bit confused as to what chat gpt is and why everyone's talking about it and different things like that's what it does but that's that's <laughs> thing is this, this subject's so so big like so chat gpt doesn't just do that um you can also ask it to write lines of code you can ask it to basically anything that's written anything that would be generated off some database it can now pull and do for you so if you want to write like a html script you can say write a code for a website that does this and it will spit out the code for you all correct all ready to go just to plug in um there's a lot that it can do so that's kind of the the chat side of things, which we'll probably jump into a bit more. I'll just kind of like speed through some of the things. Yeah. Users. Um, illustration wise, there are services such as Dali and mid journey now, which are essentially just text to image. So you can type, I want to see a bowl of fruit filled with basketballs and a little fairy on top. And it will generate just out of nowhere, like illustrations. Um, it can do photorealistic. It basically just creates artwork from you typing in whatever it is you want to see. Um, it'll give you variations thereof. And then from that, you can also then say, I want to see more of this. I want to see less of this. And it will tweak that image to fit your needs based off of just text. Um, there is also the video side of things. So one of the latest ones I've seen is you can now upload. One of their examples was there was um, a picture of like just a baby monkey and it turned that into a moving baby monkey video. Um, then it said turn this into a bear by some running water and it took the basis of that monkey turned it into a cute little bear with running water behind it and fields and everything that looks like you could tell it's still just about tell that it was computer generated but it's all just it's good enough that you could entertain people with it um and then the final main one as well is audio so audio has kind of exploded um with this again so what I've seen a lot of is a lot of people plugging in, for example, people like Joe Rogan, and then just getting them to overlay their voice into stuff. So you can literally type whatever it is you want someone to say, and it sounds like that person is now saying the thing. Um, yeah, I have a lot of like things to go into on that, but I don't like. I feel like that's part of the conversation. I don't want to um, get to until in a minute. So, Sam, just based off of those four general sweeping overviews on stuff, mm. because okay. I would say like. Your voice definitely is going to represent a lot of mine and a lot of what people might be thinking right now. Okay. Before I go into my knee-jerk, like, disdain, disgust and abhorrence, um, I would like to say that I think there are, inc there are some incredibly positive um, applications for this. And I think that, much like the internet puts, um, made knowledge accessible, to everybody um i think this will make things accessible to people that um otherwise wouldn't be able to afford it or wouldn't be able to to do certain things um you know not everyone can afford research assistance or universities and things like that and if you've got if you're using it to kind of as you know as like a partner as a helper to to do certain things i think the accessibility of it um could really be immeasurably helpful to people, um, you know, below the kind of class system of being able to afford universities, all all sorts of different things, and you know, and, and then of course accessibility again, people um, with different forms. I'm certain I can hear my son padding at the door. Accessibility wise, 
um i think there are some some real um good i'm trying to think of the like pros if you're doing a pros and cons this kind of thing um <clears throat> as with the internet and anything else that um is created humans you know twist and use it for different types of things we are um endlessly creative when it comes to doing things for less work than uh it would usually take mm -hmm. i have a lot of opinions um <laughs> like first of all it freaks me the fuck out i'm just gonna put that out there it freaks me the fuck out um i am not someone that grew up like i was just i was just um just in the kind of youth bracket when things like I never used MSN Messenger. Like I didn't have a Facebook until I was like 21 or around that age. So like I just missed the boat on, on kind of growing up with this stuff so that a lot of it is intuitive. It isn't to me. Um, it, uh, just ask Dan, Slack, Discord, anything like that. I'm just like, ugh, bane of my life. I don't understand why or how or, or what people get from it, but fair. So if that bothers me, you can understand that something of this level that I have, like, first of all, no idea how, like, you know, it works. But secondly, just the idea that you could say, create this for me. Um, and you've got a piece of artwork, my brain immediately goes to all of the artists that have spent years of their life, like mastering, honing their craft that are already getting like, think of a more politically acceptable way of saying what you're thinking, <laughs> um, <laughs> are already um, being at best undervalued for their their skills mm -hmm. um and of course with anything there will always be people in any equation and there will always be people that can and want to buy human made art um but just as the accessibility rises for some people other people it's going to like freeze out as with any kind of leap forward in any industry so yeah my general view is if you're using it in the sense of like, oh, I need five examples of this and you ask for it and it comes up with it and then you can like look through them and, and still do the work, then fine. But like if you're asking it to write a novel for you or like create a piece of art that you then sell, that kind of thing, I that I think is gross. Yeah. So here's where I think we need to approach this conversation from is looking at that pro and that con. Um, mm -hmm. each possible thing because i i've reached a point with myself on this because i definitely had that like freak out moment the minute i first tried chat gpt and i was like this is literally just writing a novel like it's mm -hmm. something i've just put in some criteria it's now writing a novel um but i've kind of come around to a peace of mind in myself of and and some form of optimism somewhat mostly just because inherently within me i do believe that in the long run like there, there, are, there are always going to be people that want to buy the cheap and buy the quick and will buy AI generated stuff and won't give a shit where it comes from. But there are always going to be people that value what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, like you say, the work and the craft and everything that goes into it. Yeah. Um, is this going to disrupt certain industries? And, you know, it, it will, you know, things have been disrupted endlessly for the past however many years um in, ma in massive waves like you look at just easily the taxi industry over the last sort of 15 years and the invention of uber and how that just like screwed everything up like social media changed how we connect with people by making us connect with people in real life less um amazon like, amazon, like all of these things have happened we're yeah. alive we're still here we reap the benefits in many ways like you know we we are built for change um with that said i one of the things that I've already seen are a few people that have hit my um, ads on my Instagram, which are the example of the bad type of people, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. my opinion, but I think my opinion is correct. <laughs> and one of those is, um, here's a very, very easy side hustle. Go to ChatGPT, 
ask it to write you a kid's book, go to Dali, get some AI illustrations, put them onto KDP, sell a kid's book. Seen one of those already. I've also seen circulating quite heavily for some reason onto my Instagram, given like who I am and what I believe in, like very interesting targeting. And I kind of, I, I have a, a feeling about this. Um, but I'm receiving an ad from a woman that looks the part, um, <laughs> which is very much, I've made thousands of pounds this month selling books and I'm not even an author. I didn't even write the books. I just did this. If you go into this course, you'll see these principles, but I've done none of this work and I'm selling shitloads. And I, I, it's it's easy. I'm like, even with AI, it's not fucking easy to market a book and sell it. But also my, my suspicion with this particular ad is that they know that it's going to anger me. Therefore, they know that I'm going to share it. And therefore that message is going to spread. So it's been one of those things that like I've deliberately, I was so close to like putting up on my stories and doing some bits and pieces. And I was like, no, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what they want from me. Yeah. Um, so these, these people already exist and like, they are going to scare people and they are going to worry people. But like, I think they are the, the, in every industry, there's bad eggs. Like in, in the coaching industry, there are people that are literally selling, like, we can fix you tomorrow things. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's always there. That being said, so the real question becomes with a lot of this AI stuff, how can we use it in a way that is morally good and, you know, right for authors to use? Um, and I'll preface this part by saying that if you want to see a quite um, comprehensive outline on how authors can use AI, check out the Alliance of Independent Authors. They have an entire section there with sort of guidelines and things that have been created with, you know, experts, you know, inputting, putting things in. And um, I'm pretty, I, I can't remember if um, Joanna Penn wrote a lot of it or if she just kind of like contributed to it um but it's, it's a very good starting point because the thing that i think we have to accept here is transparency in our process as creators yeah. so if you are in any way using artificial intelligence in the creation of your books then just a little note here maybe in the copyright page maybe on your website just to say you know some elements of your book and just outline what you're using and where you're using like it's not a thing where you have to you know tattle tail on yourself or be fully comprehensive but just that you know if it, it depends, I guess, how much input you use from, because if you're creating entire outlines, entire chapter things from AI, let people know, like it's yeah. not, your, not your brainchild. Um, if the, the AI is writing your entire book, dear God, like tell people if AI is doing your cover art, let people know if you're using an AI narrator, let people know. Oh, no, AI narrators, I've got opinions on that. Yes, we'll get to that. <laughs> we, we, I, I know where you're going with that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I've used ChatGPT for a couple of book projects over the last, I think, two months playing with it. Mm -hmm. And the way that I've come to see ChatGPT in my process is as a research assistant. Mm -hmm. So In the past, if I wanted to use like a name generator, like a fancy name generator to create a town name or a character name for a particular person, I would scour a bunch of different websites. I'd type in, I'd have like five different tabs open. I'd type, I'd search, I'd do all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. With one service now, I can say, give me 20 fantasy names and it will populate those. And, you know, I can use some of those and or I can twist them or I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to um, come up with just potential ideas. So I popped in there at one point, like uh, what would be I put what would be um, some of the key points to include in a book to teach about marketing. And it comes up with a bunch of key points. You've got a starting point add your flavor, add your knowledge, like because the other thing with this AI is not going to be fully individualized and unique to the thing that you're trying to push forward like it's, mm. it's not like ai is going to be built from a mass educational system and it's never this is the whole point of being a human writer is you can tell it in your way how you do it mm -hmm. um, with a spin that nothing else could match and i think that is where the value of what we do comes um so yeah primarily for me i've used it a lot for um as i say sort of like things like generating hashtags um i've used it weirdly this was a weird one i was like can you find or can you name 10 uh, small horror presses that are accepting submissions? Mm. And although it said like, we can't check which ones are still accepting. These are the 10 most popular ones from the information it has. Mm -hmm. The stuff like that, I'm like, as a research assistant, you're saving yourself hours of time tab browsing, which I think is a good way to use chat GPT for your books. Sam? I... <laughs> I have nothing. Mm -hmm. right. Like I I don't disagree with anything you've just said. It is not for me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I I think when it comes to this kind of stuff, I'm basically a dinosaur. Um, like I still, I mean, I type when I'm doing long form stuff, but I still prefer pen and paper. Mm. I still prefer a paintbrush over a um, stylus. There is for me part of the joy of creating things is the process of finding that stuff and like as before when I realized that I used to think that if I could have any superpower it would be to just like instantly learn any skill I realized that the point of um learning the skill is is not just so like for example if I saw a bird flying I could just fly um or you know, I I like I know kung fu. The point of the skill and everything is not just the end result; it's the journey and it's how it changes you and the things that you learn on the side that you never expected to as part of it. Um. So all of all of it, even the tedium, even the like tab hopping, or you know, the like going through the library as exhausting and boring as it can be it's part of the process for me and I I don't want to go anywhere near this honestly <laughs> well this is the thing as well you don't have to like not yet no although AI is growing it's not a thing that you have to dip into um wait until it reaches a social pressure level we'll see, we'll see. it will paper and pencil still exist but yeah it will yeah It'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, Many farthings still exist. <laughs> but yeah, so that's some of the ways you can use things like chat GPT. Um, and as mentioned earlier, these things are already evolving. Bing, which is a Microsoft search engine, unveiled a couple of days ago last week, um, their version of essentially what chat GPT is. And it's what they call in like the next evolution of the internet, uh, or at least of um, search engines. And it takes the premise of the search engine, but plugs all of this technology into it, creates it as like a chat system. Um, and some of the uh, some of the things that you can do in that is one of the things that you can showcase, for example, is um, I'm going on a trip from the 13th to 17th of this month to this place, give me an itinerary, and it will spit out a itinerary for you for things that you could possibly do over that week. Um, within that, you can say, oh, actually, it's now three days, and it will adjust that. You can say, I really want to try some Thai food. It will add some of that into your itinerary. Um, it can create shopping lists from that um from you can create like uh sorry meal plans and then shopping lists and all this different kind of stuff um so already like as i say this stuff is evolving although i will also add that in the last couple of days the amount of stories about the new release of this bing gpt fucking up quite horrendously and quite hysterically um definitely tells us that this isn't entirely ready yet um but going into things like artwork did you have something you want to add to that? No, no. Going to things like artwork. Um, so again, like the idea that you can text to image, um, there are a, a number of negative things you can do with this. So again, like people who are already using it for book covers without any kind of attribution, um, people who are selling artwork that is AI, like even I at this point really don't really know what the, the um, legislational rules are. I that. doubt there is any at this uh, point. This, like yeah. we're only just getting ground to like some form of policing the internet. Yeah. And like that's still laughable. Oh. Like there is no legislation. Yeah. It, it's, it's it's the Wild West. Yeah, we're still arguing about women's rights. Um so <laughs> artwork. So one of the ways that I have so I've played around with it a fair bit, mostly for two purposes. Number one is ideation because I'm a very visual person, sometimes like, mm -hmm. I can scour and scour and scour and I can't find like the kind of images that are in my head. And so I've created certain bits of artwork that I put onto like private boards for myself to use so that I can be like, okay, here's inspiration, here's a jumping off point. Perfect example, I did one this week for a story that I'm currently writing at the minute for later this year, just to kind of give me a feel and a flavor of the kind of thing that I'm after. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really don't know what it is, like just seeing an image. Does me. I mean, we've seen it with the Nowhere Line and other things as well. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I've done as well is for um, short stories that I've given to my Patreon, I've created tiny little images from AI, sort of literally just put, this is an AI generated image. Um, 
but it kind of just adds a bit of spark and a bit of flavor for um my already involved audience to lure them into the stories um anything on that um <laughs> Can you feel the tension in the air? The thing is, like, I have, I have no problem with people using it how you're using it. It's just, it's not for me to use it that way. And I'm, I'm all about good for you, not for me. When it comes to that, like, I don't think there's anything um, morally dubious about what you are doing with it and what you know some people will do with it. Uh, yeah, I just. Again, like I say, there are some, there will be some beautiful applications for accessibility, like yeah. for, you know. I will have a little public service announcement as well towards the end of this episode. So if people want a teaser to keep on listening, like mm -hmm. it's, it's one that like, it's, it's the only moment where I've genuinely been freaked out that I'm going to like just share with people because I think it's very important for. Is it the thing Carl showed us? Uh... Or was that just funny? I can't tell. Oh no! Yes and no. Like it's, okay. Right. Okay. but uh, yeah, that's kind of like fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, video. I've not. <laughs> Sorry, hilariously, my video froze at the exact moment you said video. Lol. Do you want to push through or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, just as an FYI for people listening and watching, uh, Sam's having some video troubles at the minute with yeah. the camera. Because um, I'm speaking out against AI. It's fucking with me perfectly frozen again it seems to like hit a certain point and it just stops i know i don't understand this it. is the system crashing down on us uh yeah video so i haven't personally done anything with video i can imagine that there is some use out there to bring to life like videos of your book covers doing things like stuff in the background to make really pretty sort of like promotional um ads and stuff like i can see that being a bit of a use um yeah, personally, not anything that I've kind of played with at this point. Mm -hmm. but, you know, for authors who are using YouTube for different things, there might be more video use there. Um, like, I'm sure there's infinite possibilities about that. But mm -hmm. and then with audio, um, obviously, one of the big things here is narration and how people are going to be using AI, because essentially, as a narrator, all you need to do is plug in X hours of your own voice. And then you can license your voice to companies. So, you know, if I wanted to put myself in the system and to get hopefully royalties and sales with my voice, like I could do that. I could, you know, give people just a file and then go into the system and, and sell. Obviously, the downside there being that I don't want to be the voice of Mein Kampf. Um, don't you steal my thing. <laughs> I've been saying this yeah. for months. Well, and what happened? As a as a narrator, an audiobook narrator. I have a real problem with the idea of um, essentially doing what Dan just said. Um, again, this is a very personal thing. Um, you do you. I have been saying for months now, like, I don't want to sell my voice. And because then I lose the right to discretion. I lose the right to, like, if... You know, for example, like Dan just said, or like Dan just stole, uh, the <laughs> mind camp thing. I've been saying that for months. Like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get a phone call from my mum being like, why are you narrating my camp? Mm -hmm. I don't want um, to switch on, like, the TV or be on YouTube and there's an advert for The Sun and I'm narrating it. I, like, I, I have a very strong moral compass and like it trumps money time and time again which is probably why i'm broke um i will like i turned down an audition um when I, I and i was like getting no work and an audition came through for me for the sun and i was like no and don't ask again mm -hmm. like there are there are lo like lines that only i can draw for myself and if I'm selling my voice and people can just buy it and use it then it could be used for anything yeah and I think like at what point like I'm personally responsible if I've decided to put that out there and sell it I'm then also personally responsible for the fact that my voice is now on 
something that I find um, like reprehensible. So this is, yeah, out of all of these, this is one of the ones which is really, well, when we talk about um, licensing of voice and stuff, that is the only one that we've come up with that is particularly very, very personal. Like it is a piece of you that you're putting into a system. Like you think of examples like um, Carrie Fisher signed her name and likeness to the Star Wars films. And so they can basically just use CGI to keep creating her, even in the years passing her death. And, you know, for toys and anything else, they can use her likeness and bring her back in. And like, for me personally, that is something that I really don't like seeing. There've been quite mm -hmm. a few actors now that have, you know, appeared from beyond the grave because their likeness and looks have been sold to companies. Um, so yeah, it's definitely um, treacherous waters on this one. And something that any narrator should be looking quite heavily into the T's and C's because we've already heard and I've not looked deeply into these to know how much of the truth there is. But we've already seen or heard whisper of narrators who have had their voices sold onto other projects without their permission because of small lines in the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons that um, me and the Hawk and Cleaver guys are currently baking into our terms and conditions for our narrators the lines that, you know, we won't be selling your voice onto other people. That's just just for that security for them. Mm -hmm. because it is this stuff we have to be careful of like it can, it can sound paranoid sometimes but the fact is that it can happen and if it does happen you're fucked yeah and there's a reason why like terms and conditions are so long and like if if it was on paper in front of you so thick and the print is so small and it is written in legalese it's because like they want to stop people reading the terms and conditions and then the those people that like will sit and read them like most people without a law degree will not understand you know what it is i mean there's an application for ai you could ask them <laughs> you could copy and paste your contract in and ask them to see if like yeah yeah it's true i mean there's a whole um set... that's what i mean about accessibility yeah there's a whole section on it in um like Dave Chappelle did one about all of his rights with the Chappelle show when he basically didn't realize what was in the contract and mm -hmm. barely any money for something that went huge. Yeah. Um, and was his. And was his. So mm -hmm. yeah, from a narrator standpoint, um, obviously there's some tre treacherous waters there. So do be careful um, as this evolves over the coming months and years. Um, authors who are trying to find narrators, like, cause this is, this is one of the things that is like, I fully understand from an author perspective, like, real narration is expensive mm -hmm. like very, very expensive um and rightfully so because a lot of hours go into sitting in a sweaty booth like trying to just make perfect audio editing it all to clean it up to put it up like if you have a book that is 10 hours of final audio that's taken like 80 to 100 to put mm -hmm. together um it's like exaggeration but you know colors the point yeah um so you know it might in some way drive down the price of narration but at the same time like really just try and bear in mind that there's someone on the other end of this production and that, you know, there are means to make it happen if you want to turn mm -hmm. your book into uh, audio. Um, but that broadly covers kind of a lot of what I've experienced so far with AI and different things I've seen. Like I literally, um, in the break while you try and sort out your camera, stumbled across a website, um, called runwayml.com which is literally combining a lot of these tools you can do images you can do videos you can do sound um all this kind of stuff so already as i've said at the beginning like these these companies are already evolving and leveling up to try and mm -hmm. be the ones to dominate the market like everyone's currently trying to be the next google um or the next apple or the next amazon in this particular industry yeah. so things will keep moving and things will keep happening um and it's it's a case of as i say like i'm all i can do when it comes to this ai revolution is be me in the best way and use the tools in the best way that i feel is morally acceptable pass on that knowledge to other people like because there can be a big um reflex to panic and to worry oh yeah when They're the all... trains first came about everyone thought they would catch on fire if they went on them because they moved too fast exactly people were worried when books were released because you know people were losing themselves in paper instead of being outside like mm -hmm. it's, you know so much like we we survive we adapt we grow that's what we do mm -hmm. um, it just helps to be knowledgeable and keep your head above water when thinking about this stuff and as i say like using it in ways that are morally um 
acceptable really like mm -hmm. just don't harm other people don't fuck other people open by you know bypassing real human services for ai that you know do the job equally um and well before i go on to like my little psa is there anything mm. you want to say to kind of like round this off i know I you've think... got a ray of sunshine with this so far <laughs> i'm joking wow um yeah because i was while you were talking about it i was thinking um because you know there's lots of different services and things that i use when it comes to editing and and all the rest of it and i don't know code i couldn't code an editor like at what point do you like it's easy for me to say like don't like you know ai is scary and i enjoy the process of doing these things myself but like you know the truth is i use a lot of um like i use google i use um like different apps when i'm editing i use different softwares and things and you know like i couldn't create those things from scratch myself so like i'm already using things that i haven't created to help me create like there's there's always going to be always going to be that and and you know that's what i mean about accessibility like my learning curve with editing has been like pretty steep and swift and i've gone from like not really knowing how to do it to loving it and being pretty good at it but if this was like 20 years ago it would have been a, a whole different landscape for me and it would have been a lot harder mm -hmm. um so th this is what i mean about accessibility i think that it has it really genuinely does have some very positive applications and is going to like help a lot of people that you know like the law the lawyer example that i used you know not everyone can afford a lawyer they are expensive not everyone has a law degree and so just to kind of you know have a an aid and assistance in in those things that is intuitive and isn't like really difficult to use i think is wonderful um and of, of course that's one example there would be like thousands more um and at the same time like i think you can rail against it all you want it's here it's happening it's going to continue to happen um and if people want to use ai to create artwork and they want to use it to narrate their books and all of the rest of it like nothing's gonna stop that from happening for me personally i um like i i like i said i don't want to sell my voice um and i know that as a like as a consumer like if i'm like listening to samples of audiobooks like i don't like it when it's not a human voice and I think there will be some people that don't care. There will be some people that maybe prefer like a robot voice because they are getting better and better. Like they are like getting better. Um, I yeah, I I I'm really trying to not be <laughs> like fully me on this because like I'm aware that my opinion um comes with a hefty dose of privilege involved in it. Like I have you know, a level of access and intelligence around certain things that not everybody does. Um, so I'm just, I'm trying to be as unbiased as I possibly can be. Mm -hmm. And if you knew me personally, you would give me a fucking medal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I, I do think, like I say, it does have real potential for positive applications. Mm -hmm. It is not for me. I at this point do not perceive myself to use it um but yeah so, yeah so here's the other thing on that as well because it, it's worth noting that I take quite an interest in a lot of this stuff and mm -hmm. a lot of people within my circle tend to look deeply into this stuff so I'm aware that a lot of the things I'm pointing out haven't hit the general zeitgeist yet like I still have just general friends out and about that have never heard of chat GPT I think if you're in the author space you're likely to have heard about it just from people like Joanna Penn and others perpetuating it um but broadly on a very sort of civilian scale like a lot of people have no idea what's going on with it so it is it is very much early doors with this um and you know take it at the pace that you can while it develops and, and does what it needs to be because there's always going to be those front runners like this is this is how technology works there's a whole um bell curve on um 
adoption of um, new products and things. So you're mm -hmm. always going to have the people at the beginning that are just like, oh my God, I want to try this new thing. And yeah. it's very few small percentage of people. And then it kind of goes up a little bit. And then you get sort of like mass adoption as it goes over the curve into sort of the late draggers. So like if you think of the moments, like I, I always remember when um, my great nan was really pissed off that uh, one of her, it was like one of her TV services stopped working because they turned to digital. And she's like, I don't want to go to digital. And it's like, you don't have a choice. They've stopped the other one. Yeah. That's, that's your my point. That's your people at the end of the line. Um, so yeah, it can be intimidating. It can be quite optimistic. Like you know, it is quite fun to play with a lot of this stuff. Um, but again, it comes down to just being cognizant of how you use it and how that impacts yourself, your friends, society, that kind of thing. Um, and one thing I'll kind of like cap off just as a just this kind of is linked to the AI stuff, not necessarily to the authors, but something that came to my attention uh, a couple of days ago that I just think is worth people being aware of because it can it, I do generally foresee this um being a potential issue in the future deep fakes mm -hmm. so for people unfamiliar with deep fakes deep fakes are when I don't know if it, it, it's got to be AI in some way but like you can now edit a video to so say this one to put someone like Tom Cruise's face on my own and make it look like Tom Cruise is sat where I am doing my movements speaking in his voice and making it look very, very, very realistic. Like it happened a couple of years ago. They did like a whole demo with like a Barack Obama one where they just made this fake video, used his voice, all that kind of stuff, just to show the technology. Um, I have I have a genuine concern about uh, audio at the minute in this kind of voice licensing because mm. there have been a few cases already of scammers phoning up people pretending to be family members and friends. Mm -hmm. Um. And so I had this conversation with my friends just a couple of days ago where I was like, how do you guard yourself against that? If someone phones up on the other line and sounds like your mum or your nan or your friend, like, how do you guard against that? And so something to be aware of, like my only answer I can think of is like code words. But, you know, that feeds very much into your dystopian book. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to scare people with that, but that was genuinely something where I was like, just, like, just be aware of some of that stuff because scammers have access to a whole new set of tools mm -hmm. on that cheery note yeah i was trying not to take it there because my brain's immediately like things like um the police could use it to doctor evidence mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a lot there's so much that is terrifying yeah so and humans be humans i'm sorry i keep interrupting you I just think, as a general rule, the human race is scum and they're going to use this in the most abhorrent, fucking disgusting way that they possibly can. There will be images of people's faces doing things that they would never do. Um, and people are, yeah, uh, I hate it. Trust evidence. I hate it. I did so well until you brought that up and you opened the, yeah, no, uh, no, no, thank you. So that's how to use AI as an author. Um, again, like many possibilities, many different things coming up. Take your time, learn about it, use it wisely. Um, and I'll just plug one more time. If you want to join me on my free webinar on Friday, the 24th of February, I believe it is, uh, seven o'clock to eight o'clock UK, jump over to activatedauthors.com forward slash zero Z E R O. And you will be able to sign up and get involved. Uh, spaces are limited. So do jump along if you are interested and make sure you claim your spot. And um, we'll finish by saying a massive thank you to you, the listeners, for tuning in. We appreciate you and the time you choose to spend with us each and every week. And as always, if you're looking to level up your writing and activate your author career, head on over to activatedauthors.com to find out all about our community, our resources, and everything else we've got going on. One more time from me and Sam. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Activate your energy.